from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yo, it's your boy, holla back. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. We were sitting here in the studio doing our show, and the name Danny Bonaducci kept crawling across the bottom of the screen on CNN yesterday. I mean, it must have been hundreds of times with all these personal details about his divorce, which is now fine. Now, let me read to you from foxnews.com very briefly here. It says here, after almost 18 years of marriage, Danny and Gretchen Bonaducci's divorce was made final in L.A. County Superior a Court on Wednesday. Gretchen filed for divorce from the Partridge Family star in April 2007, citing irreconcilable differences. Now listen to this. This, this is why I think the government should get out of the marriage business, because all your personal stuff is laid out there. Says here in the final settlement, Gretchen was awarded their 2008 Ford truck and their house in the Hollywood Hills. And Danny has been ordered to pay his ex $10,000 a month in spousal support. He will all $10,000 a month. It's $120,000 a year. In vagina money. Uh, he will also fork out $3,000 in child support for each of their two children. Well, that's to be expected. As well as $1,930 monthly for each of their health insurance needs. Health insurance for your kids, you're going to do that. It says here the papers also state that both parents will have joint legal and physical custody over Donna Isabella 13 and son Dante 7. Monthly payout, it says here, and I'm just reading Fox News, says here the monthly payout will be a pay raise for Gretchen, who earned an average of thirty-seven fifty per month. That's $3,750 per month in wages and salary in 2006, $3,355 per month in 2007. So now she'll be getting 10000 a month. And it goes on to tell you all kinds of personal things in here, including Danny's salary for uh, being on the radio. It gives his salary for doing a TV show called I Know My Kid's a Star. It uh, talks about uh, Danny's uh, corporation. <laughs> it's all in here. It's all laid out. Now, um... One thing I have heard Danny say on the air, and as you know, here in L.A., if you're not listening in L.A., Danny precedes us every day. He does an hour on the radio before us here in Los Angeles. Um, and Danny filled in for me a few weeks ago, and uh, that was wonderful. But um, uh, one thing that I have heard Danny say, and I'm, now I've got to ask him in, in view of what what came out. I have heard Danny say that he's still a proponent of marriage, still believes in it. I got I got to find out that's still true. Danny. I, I, there we go. We didn't pot you up. We'll try it again. Are you there, sir? Yes, oh, I, I am. We, had, we didn't have you potted up here. Oh, that's quite all right. How are you? Uh, well, I'm great. Uh, how, oh, more importantly, well. how are you? I, I am very well, but before I forget, because I'm getting of that age where things come and go rather quickly, and other things don't come and go rather quickly. Um, you said I am still, thank you, sir. Uh, I am still a proponent of marriage. That is true. But then you went on to say, I still believe in it. That is not necessarily true. There is a difference. If you believe in the spirit of marriage, because you and I are a lot closer together than you think we are where you say your standards of what you will do in order to get sex, which is the basic reason to live, and I agree with you 1,000%. I just have a very low moral code. I will marry a woman knowing, as I'm saying I do, what I mean is I do the bridesmaid five minutes from now and will feel absolutely no guilt over it. I need to have sex all the time. And if that means being married to a woman and then cheating on her, that's what I will do. All right. But uh, as anyone who's been married, and I've been married, as you know, four times, anyone who's been married knows getting married does not guarantee sex all the time. 
No, in my case, it guaranteed sex uh, uh, as often as little was once a month. Wow. So why would you ever do that again? Well, for uh, I, I wouldn't do exactly what I did before. What I would do is I would take a girl that I was very much in love with, like Gretchen, although I did marry her the same day I met her, but, you know, uh, the world does look rosier through the bottom of her ass. And I, I walked down the aisle, and I married the girl, and I cheated on her with, with, uh, with other women rather rapidly. And I thought, after a while on this money thing, because the money is so much money, Tom. But she did deserve it. The deal I made with her, I said, I will love, honor, and cherish you. I didn't finish the sentence. The sentence should have been, I will love, honor, and cherish you, but then sleep with all your friends the second you're not meeting my requirements. All right, uh, so let's say that deserved a payment. Wouldn't a lump sum do? Um, I think a lump sum would do, and it has occurred to me to offer her a lump sum. It is my uh, uh, opinion that Gretchen will be married very soon. She's uh, 42, but stunningly gorgeous. She looks like she could be on the cover of Vogue magazine every time she steps out of the house. I know, because I pay $350 for a, a personal makeup artist and hairdresser before she goes to lunch. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I get upset there. Yeah. Oh, it's a friggin' nightmare, Tom. But on the other hand, I had an affair, and everybody she knew knew but her. And I think if someone did that to me, somebody would get seriously hurt. I do think that the woman does have some monetary or some physical or some sort of um, retribution to that kind of behavior. If you've ever been cheated on in public, your friends knew about it and wouldn't tell you, that's what I did to that girl. And that seems unacceptable because she was a very nice girl. She just didn't want to have sex as often as I did. That's all it broke down to. So first I started sleeping with some girl I didn't even know. Next thing I'm sleeping with the neighbors. I'd come home from work. And there'd be four women in the house drinking tea, and I'd be going, Jesus, I've slept with all these people. i got to get out of here. And, you know, it turned out, luckily, they could just, you know, the girls were being cool and didn't tell her. But, yeah, I, just, I think the way I treated uh, her was reprehensible, and, yeah, she does deserve something for it. Now, here's another question I have, because I've been divorced, and my last divorce is under seal. Uh, it is not a matter of public record. Yeah, all that's known is that I got a divorce. How much right. money I make, how much property I have, uh, how many businesses I own, or what my assets are. That's all my business. And, uh, you know, because we do the same thing and we do it for the same company, in fact, we're on the air one after the other, I, I read this story about you and imagine what if it was me. How can you have your whole personal life laid out there? Isn't there some way you can agree to seal this information? Uh, the rest of us don't need to know that. Well, the rest of you don't need to know that. That's true. Uh, it's, it, it's funny how you are right at the same time that I disagree with you sometimes. <laughs> the rest of us don't need to know that personal information about me. But what we don't need to know is what sells the most newspapers in America, which would be the National Enquirer. That's all that sells us is things we don't need to know. You, sir, impart information to people who believe they need to know it or call you dad and take Lycus 101. I don't want a personal life. I have no use for a personal life. I'm not interested in having a personal or private life. And if it's the cost of knowing exactly where I work, exactly where I live, I did not fight tooth and nail to become famous so I could be ignored. I like being famous, and if the price of that is you knowing exactly how much money I make, what businesses I own, how little money I actually have, then that's the price I have to pay well, I'm for gonna trying tell, to I'm, fulfill my dreams. I'm going to tell, tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Here, here it is. Okay. Let's say a, a competing company that wants to offer you a radio job thinks you make five times what you make, and they're about to offer you six times what you make to go work over there. Now they know what you do make. Actually, to be quite frank with you, they don't. That uh, that information is years old. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Well, isn't this information that uh, came from the, the paperwork that was filed uh, in the divorce? I mean, where else would it come from? The divorce was filed a year and a half ago, and I have re-signed since then with um, with this company and yes. not just necessarily this radio station. Right. Okay. Very good. I still would be concerned. I wouldn't want people thinking, no matter how much I make or you make, I wouldn't want people knowing what that is because who knows? Maybe I want people to think I make ten times as much as I make. Hey, that's, that's where you and I completely agree. That's, it kind of bothers me that the money is low, even though for most of America in a hard economy, this is, this is one of the arguments that Corolla and I used to have. One day on the radio, he was actually railing and angry that his Lamborghini was late being delivered. And I'm thinking, dude, there are people in their Volvos right now driving to work in jobs they hate. And you're complaining about waiting for your Lamborghini like I complained about waiting for the cable guy. But I must admit, I, I hate it that they have a record of me making 500 grand and 280 grand for the TV show when I have in, in years past and in years uh, very currently tripled that number. I'm, an, I'm a bit of an egomaniac. I would like the girls who are reading that article right now going, Danny's single and really rich and has some big arms, too. We'll get over the short red-headed thing. <laughs> well, I hear Danny's six foot four when he stands on his money. Um, you know, I would warn people, I'm with you there. Yes, I would like, if they're not going to hide how much money I make, they could at least have the decency to exaggerate it. I also, by the way, I knew it wasn't the correct amount because of the amount that was awarded in child support and alimony. Right, you could never pay that on that amount of money. Right. But still, there's a number, and it's on the page, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I feel creeped out. I, I, I don't want to feel like I know that. Because I wouldn't want other people knowing what I make, whatever it is. Well, but people don't know what you make. But you must admit, people know that you're you're a very well off man. There's no hiding. You're a, a gigantic success. I even, you know, I uh, I used to say things like uh, when I first started the station. You know, this, we have a certain obligation here. We're on the station that Stern built and now rides on Lycus. You know, so people know if we're riding, if we're a giant company and we're riding on Lycus. They know you're making a very, very comfortable living. People don't have homes in the wine country. that are So people know you're a very wealthy man. But people, in my opinion, I'm just about to give you a compliment out of a field, is they don't know how much you really deserve it. There are very few people that can do what you do as well as you do it. Well, thank I you know. Very much. I've tried. No, I understand. Thank you for that. Now, now let me ask you another question. This, this, this divorce has been in the negotiating stage for a very long time. Yes. And now, my question is this. If if you feel that Gretchen deserves all this money, why did it take so long to negotiate? It shouldn't have taken even a second. I told her, take half of everything. Uh, find out from just an arbitrator what a uh, fair child support and alimony is, and then I will give him $50,000 extra for not having to pay a lawyer. And then she got scared and actually signed... Uh, uh, went to a lawyer. The lawyer hassled me, and I said, I'm not going to fight with a chick about money. I went and I wrote a letter saying, I want all my jeans, five pairs of boots, and ten shirts. And I had it notarized by a notary public and delivered to uh, Gretchen and her lawyer, saying I want nothing but my shoes, jeans, and shirts. You can have the house. You can have the three million bucks. Goodbye. I just don't ever want to fight with a girl for money. It is beneath me, and there are not that many things that are beneath me. Um, and <laughs> That's not what I hear. <laughs> to my surprise, a judge refused it. A judge said, Mr. Bonici, I know you think that um, men come into court and get screwed over by their wives, and sometimes that is in fact true. But there is no way that I can allow you to come into this courtroom, a wealthy man, and leave penniless. That can't happen. I reject this. But it shouldn't have taken a second. She still has a copy of the letter. I offered her every penny, the home, all the cars. I just wanted my boots, jeans, and shirts. Wow. She just was not satisfied with that. So now not only are you paying out this money, but uh, instead of the money all going to her, how much of it went to lawyers? She, I, I would say she wasted at least 100 Gs of her own money on lawyers because I was giving her everything. Right. It could have all gone to her. By the way, and in case you're wondering if this is if there any part of this is untrue, just check with Gail Cohen. That would be my divorce lawyer who went, are you out of your mind? You can't give her everything. And I said, too late. And then the judge rejected it. Wow. 
Uh, it's an amazing story. And so you would do this again? Would I marry? Would I marry again? Yeah. Yes, but I would. I don't believe I would marry that without a prenup. Uh, you know my girlfriend Amy, correct? Yeah, of course. She's uh, 26 years old. I met her very close to her 25th birthday. She was 24. When she started to act as if she were my girlfriend, I just looked at her right in the face and I said, "You need to know this right now. I will cheat on you before your 27th birthday. That's a fact." And then that will never stop. But the good news is if you hang in, I'm, I'm as old as your parents. I'm sure this sexual desire will slow down. In the meantime, you start coming around my house with my jacuzzi on the roof and my son in the living room that both say take your clothes off. I'm going to sleep with all your friends. If you bring 25-year-old chicks around my house and they're the slightest bit interested, uh, we're going to break out a bottle of something and I'm going to have naked chicks prancing around my house like every frat boy's dream. So I just made the truth known, and if she wants to get married, she's signing things. She's going to carve a prenup into a, a, a granite slab. It's going to look like the Ten Commandments of prenup. <laughs> That's hardcore. No, I'm not playing. Either it will be limited amounts of money with unlimited amounts of sex. And at any time we violate that, I will be able to violate someone else. Unbelievable. I know you have to run because you've got all kinds of new business to attend to, speaking of your new Radio D. And you, so, and you know what, though? Yeah, and just so you pay me a couple compliments, but I'll just tell the plain truth. You do not turn down a chance to be on the Tom Wecker show if you want to be a big gun in radio. This meant a lot to me. Thank you. Anytime. You come back anytime. And thanks for coming in here a few weeks ago. Anytime, like it's just you are absolutely my man. You are the man, Danny Bonaducci. There he goes. And he's paying and paying and paying through the nose. And, and he'll, he'll, he'll tell you anything you want to know about him. You can ask him any question. He'll tell you anything. But seriously, $10,000 a month in spousal support. Boys, this is what I've been telling you about, about getting married. This is what happens. 10000 a month in spousal support. 6000 a month in child support. $1,900 a month in health insurance for each kid. So that's... Um, Almost four thousand dollars a month there, six thousand it's twenty thousand dollars a month. It's almost a quarter million dollars a year. Quarter million dollars a year. How does that sound? Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. You just heard Danny Bonaducci talk about his divorce, which is finally final. Sarah, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Yes. I have an interesting phenomenon. Um, I'm going to be getting married pretty soon, and uh, my fiancé makes eight figures, and I cannot find an attorney that will do a prenup. You can't find one. Now, what reason do they give for not wanting to do it? A liability, and not on the front end, on the back end, because if something goes wrong... It comes back to them, and, um, you know, I really am in love with my fiancé. It's completely legitimate. There's nothing else going on, and I really want him to know that I'm in it for the right reason. So I don't have a, a problem with the prenuptial agreement. Well, uh, they may tell you it's liability, and uh, to some extent it may be, but I think their biggest concern is there's no big payday for them at the end. Possibly, yes. That's, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, but. if you're agreeing that he's going to pay you some paltry sum at the end or nothing or whatever uh, because you love him and that's why you're marrying him. And by the way, I think that's very honorable if that's what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's a lot of attorneys who say this is peanuts. It's not going to be worth my time when the divorce inevitably happens. I would just think it's easy money, though, right now. It's a contract, you know. It's just... And who, who, who's to say that in 10 years or 20 years, if I, you know, hopefully not, but if I get divorced, that I would use them anyway, you know? By the way, the attorneys that say that, uh, I have found, because believe me, I have a lot of experience with divorce attorneys, the ones who say that are generally in the low hourly fee category. Um, well, 
here's here's the deal. Uh, I'm actually an attorney myself, and I asked my law school professor, my community property professor, um, who they recommended, and he gave me a list, and he said most of them won't do it. And as a matter of fact, not one of them on the list um, that he gave me you know, were, would be willing to do a prenup. And so um, I had to get referrals from referrals. And, you know, finally I found one. But, it, I mean, it's I wasn't really comfortable with that. Now, without telling that. us the person's name, well, what is his hourly fee? Uh, it's, a, it's a flat fee of $3,000. Well, that, if you're in that price category, my opinion, based on my experience, I'm not a lawyer like your professor, but and I'm not like a lawyer like you, but uh, my experience has been uh, if you're not dealing with people who, who bill you on an hourly basis in the vicinity of $750 an hour, mm -hmm. that's the kind of answer you're going to get. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, but if you well, are willing to pay $750 an hour and your attorney happens to be domiciled in a place like Beverly Hills or Century City, I think you have a lot better chance of finding someone. Yeah, well, you know, I, I just, I guess that kind of, I thought it was very interesting that it was so difficult to get a prenuptial agreement. And I was also told if you waive your alimony support, it, the prenup won't even get held up in court. And I, I wasn't aware of that either. What, but what, what, what wait, won't get held up in court? What do you mean? Um, I've been told that if you waive your alimony support, you know, right now saying, right. you know, you take what you, you know. I take, we, we both go out of this, what we came in with, that it will not be held up in court. That oh, I see, that it won't stand. Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, I think there are some judges who might say this is unconscionable and I'm overruling it. But I'm not sure that that's the majority of them. And my understanding from attorneys I've talked to is that recent decisions in California indicate mm -hmm. that uh, prenups, no matter what they're calling for, are, 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 are standing more and more than they ever have. Okay. Well, that's good news. I mean, you well, know. Remember, I'm not an attorney. I'm just a guy who has paid $750 an hour to several different attorneys. Well, <laughs> so I've gotten kind of a, I've gotten my legal education by uh, the well the hard way by paying for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes that's the best way to get it. But right. um, anyway, well, I just wanted to share my thoughts and my experience, and you know, I'm kind of getting the runaround trying to do the right thing, and it's just crazy. So crazy. And why does he want to get married? Oh, because well, you're willing. Oh, because you're willing to sign a prenup. That's why. I was asking what, why he why he wants to get married, making eight figures, and the answer is because you're willing to sign a prenup. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, I think I, I bring something to the table, and we want to start a family one day. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, we'll see. Um, I, I know what I'd, I'd want you to be bringing to the table. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, love you. A higher price spread. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Tiffany on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Tiffany. How are you? Great. Uh, I was listening to you talking to Donnie Bajuchi and about the whole sex thing. I was engaged at nineteen, and I just recently broke off the engagement with him. And I'm more, I guess, on the guy side of it because he would rather, like, I'd go to bed and I'd get these 3 o'clock in the morning and we'd be hanging out with friends. And he would stay up drinking and I'd send him all these text messages like, oh, come to bed. And he would not come to bed. Like, he did not want to have sex anymore. And then he cheated on me with a fat girl. Like, I'm not talking. And I'm, a, I'm like, a decent-looking girl. Well, I'm not decent. I know I'm a good-looking girl. But he cheated on me with this girl. That it's one of my friends, and so I left the house, and he keeps trying to call me and tell me that he wants me back and he wants this, but, like, I wasn't getting any, ever. He would rather drink than come to bed. So I totally agree with Danny Bonaduce that I understand the I-need-to-get-laid aspect of it, and I am so glad I'm not Well, I do, what I don't understand, whether it's Danny or you or anybody, is why would you stay one minute past the day you realized the other person doesn't like sex more than you do? I don't know, and, like, it's... Like, he liked it, but he would just want to stay up drinking, and he'd, like, wake up the next day, and I'm like, why didn't you come to bed? Like, I tried texting you and being, like, 
hey, come to bed, like, I'll give you whatever you want, like, being cute and, like, trying to get him to come in for the right reason, and he would not do it. Well, he and told you what he wanted. Nothing. Obviously, he got what he wanted. He's still, like, hooking up with this girl, and, like, all my friends are listening probably right now, and they know what I look like, and they know what Donnie, what, what were you doing like, engaged? What were you doing engaged at such a young age anyway? No, I honestly realize that. Like, I still believe in marriage. My parents have been married for 20 years. Everyone in my family has stayed married. Nobody in my family has gotten a divorce. So I still believe in marriage, and I believe that there are good people out there that can stay married. But as for anybody that's getting married or is engaged, seriously, But you see, if you weren't in such it. a rush to get married, you wouldn't have ended up with someone so inappropriate for you. I wasn't in a rush. We've been dating for, like, five years, and then, like... All of a sudden, he got in this, like... But Donna, yeah, 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 what does that mean? It means you were dating him beginning when you were, what, 14? 15. 15? Yeah. Come on. I mean, that, it's bad. that doesn't even count, darling. <laughs> I don't know. He got into, like, this chubby chasing stage and started hooking up with, like, fat girls, and that's the only girls he hooks up with now. So apparently he wasn't in for, like, the smaller girls, because... I'm definitely not a chubby girl. <laughs> well, I'm sure we've got somebody out there who'll be happy to get the job done. Oh, there is. She is totally happy to get it done, and she still knows that he tries to get with me all the time, and, like, he finally stopped calling. No, I mean, I mean for you, darling. I was talking about for you. Huh? I mean for you. For me? Oh, yeah. There's somebody getting the job done now. It's oh, totally good. Well, then why would you want to get back with him? Why are you even taking those calls? I guess we'll never know. Come on. Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, Danny Bonaducci. Gave us all the dirty details of his divorce, which he did not have to give us because you're all here on the Fox News website. Enjoy. Look at that. After 18 years of marriage, $10,000 a month in vagina money, $6,000 a month in child support, $4,000 a month for his kids' health insurance. That is a lot of money. <laughs> Jesus. Why would anyone want to do that? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Coming up within the half hour, like is 101, your professor will be answering your questions. You might want to start dialing right now and get online for like is 101. It's coming up in less than half an hour. So uh, you call us right now. 1-800-5800-TOM and our own tool of ignorance, Dean J. Demilio, is waiting for your calls at 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello here to Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Hey, I wanted to comment on the whole Simon Cowell issue. You know, the way I figure it is, you know, you, you get with a chick and you make an agreement with her, you know, you let her know right up front. Tell her, hey, you know what? I'm not looking for marriage, whatever. You know, I'm I'm committed to my career. I, you know, I got other things going on. At that point, right there, I mean, if she she decides, okay, I can't handle that, she walks away. Cool. Well, if she stays, she's basically agreed to those terms and conditions. And so the way I figure it is, you know, say years go by down the line and you haven't renegotiated. You know, you haven't been telling her you're in love and you haven't, you know. Everything's just been everything. It stayed the same, same as it was. <clears throat> then she up and decides, well, you know what? <clears throat> I want to get married now. She's reneging on that agreement. The way I figure it, the vagina's walking out the door. I need to be compensated for my loss at that point, not the other way around. You yeah, know? well, I understand that. You know, it's amazing how the man's time is never worth anything. Uh, there are men who uh, take out the garbage, uh, fix the lawnmower, uh, do the yard work. A uh, man's work uh, is, it deserves no compensation. But if a woman ever whipped you up uh, a cheesecake, oh my, you're going to be paying forever. Right. Well, you know what? That's that the nine million dollar cheesecake. I mean, that's you know that that's a there be a, there's got to be a lot of cheesecake involved. There's got to be, I mean, beyond awesome sex. There's you know it, it, nine million dollars, Tom. I mean, that's I, I can, ins well, it's insane. 
<laughs> well, Simon Cowell was never even married. I mean, Danny Bonaducci was married for 18 years. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, you know, Danny, you know, he he uh, he was willing to do that, and uh, he was willing to uh, pay the price. And, you know, from what Danny said, you know, he didn't mind. He said, okay, you know, yeah, I did this girl wrong, whatever. And, and he was willing to do that and, and maybe willing to do that again. Uh, but, I mean, in a situation, yeah, where you're not married and you've told told the girl up front, you know, I don't know the details on Simon. I don't know if he told her up front in the beginning, hey, you know, uh, you know, I have this career that I'm pretty dedicated to. And, uh, you know, if you want to get together and bang and, and then stick around and everything, that's on you. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm pretty much uh, on my career here, and that's how it's going to be. Now, if, if he laid down law like that, he shouldn't have to pay anything. You know, he 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 made it clear, but you know, I, I don't know the details. I don't know if he did. In fact, well, the other thing is, I, my understanding is that this isn't uh, something that happened one time. Right. In fact, Danny himself said that. Right. Uh, I would say, you know, when it has happened, and and you stay, mm -hmm. you know, I, you may feel uh, that uh, you had something coming to you for the first time, but after that, you stay at your own peril. Right, right. It, yes, the, uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Kind of deal where, you know, you stick around after that. You've once again agreed to those terms and conditions. You know, the, the person has shown their colors. They've shown how they're going to be, and you said, okay, well, I know how you are, and I'm going to stick through it anyway. And then you continue being yourself. Well, that's not your fault. That's the person who stayed with you. They knew how you were. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, Jay on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, Jay. Uh, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I've been married for uh, I've been married for nine years, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not getting along with my wife. And I had a, a vagina moaning question. We uh, we live in California here, and uh, we have a daughter. We both work full time, so uh, I make more, but uh, she does have an income. Uh, my question is: Is there a rush for me to get married before the, the ten year hurdle? You mean to get divorced? Sorry, to get divorced yeah, well, yes, and that's a question, by the way, you should re-ask an attorney. Uh, but uh, what I heard was from an attorney, and he said if you're married uh, 10 years or more, um, so that, that means so, you'll be paying forever. For example, uh, Danny Bonaducci theoretically, is paying forever. Forever. See, that that's the deal. We, you know, So I get divorced now, I pay, pay alimony for, for four and a half years, but if I... If I wait another year and then get divorced, I'd pay alimony for life. That's what I understand. Yeah, so uh, it just kind of, you know, it's crept up on me. We, uh, you know, we, uh, it's just the things you talk about on the phone, just two people working, raising a kid, just no time to, to do the fun stuff we used to do. To, and I, I feel like i got to decide before that 10-year mark then. Well, yeah, but the point is, the time to see an attorney is now. Right. Even if you don't get a divorce. Yeah. You, because I have heard stories, and again, these are anecdotal, so uh, an attorney can best uh, clarify this for you. I've heard stories where judges have said, well, you're close enough to the 10-year mark. I'm going to consider it 10 years. Yeah, it's just miserable. I've Don't be wasting your time. Uh, if you're going to wait until uh, two days before 10 years, you might get scarooed. And then uh, we we do have we do have a child. Uh, the the more time uh, the more time I I, I share as as a sort of um, uh, sharing time, then the less the less child support I would. Well, say, that's right? what they say. But again, that's a question for your attorney, who I hope you will be hiring. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And don't well, be go uh, don't be going to websites or uh, don't be going to the library to fill out blanks. I mean, this you need an attorney. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. Take me out with a bong hit. Here you go, baby. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom like is show. The Tom Likas Show. We are just 15 minutes away from Likas 101. You can start dialing in now at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Get it live to your professor because we're jumping right in at the top of the hour. 1 800 5 800 8 
866. We heard about Danny Bonaducci's divorce. Shayna on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. You busy over there? No, just sitting by the airport. Uh, I was wondering, I was listening to Danny's story and whatnot, and and uh, with this whole prenup story, I've been hearing people about their prenups. But I was wondering, my fiancé and I have been together nine nine months, and uh, I'm pregnant, and we're getting ready for this kid to show up, and before we get married, he wants to sign a prenup. Good. Now, he has nothing to bring to the table. He Today. has no job. So you think he's going to be a loser for life. By the way, why do you have a baby with a loser? <laughs> he's not a loser. He just, I don't know, he, he just... Why does he, he have no job? He works uh, as construction and roofing and whatnot, and so it's on-call jobs. Which is but, which means he has no regular job. Exactly. Right. And so does so he bring why, does he bring nothing to the table or not? Not really. So then uh, he's a loser. I guess. Yeah, he, he he is. And why did you want to have a baby with a loser? Because other than other than the fact that he he may not have much to bring to the table, what he does bring is you know it's good and it keeps us you know it keeps us in balance. What, do you, what just, wait, wait wait what does that mean? He, even though we don't have enough for miscellaneous and junk and and say a new car or or anything like that, we have enough that'll get us by for the month. Yeah, but darling, you're not going to be married for a month. Theoretically, you're going to be married for the next 60 years. Uh, I was just wondering what you thought about him wanting a prenup. If he well, has nothing. at least he thinks more of himself than you do. Because uh, you think of him as a loser for life. And he may be a loser today, but clearly he thinks at some point that he won't be a loser. Yeah. Because prenups are forever too. Now, see, if, I, I so if you're saying if you're saying he doesn't need a prenup, what you're saying is he's not only a loser today, he's going to be a loser forever. Well, I was just thinking, doesn't a prenup only qualify if he brings money before the marriage? Like, say he has no, $5, no, no, darling. It doesn't work that way. In fact, whatever he has before the marriage belongs to him and him alone, not you. Yeah. So if we're married and say he earns $5,000 within the five years and we get divorced, don't I get half of that? Even uh, well, regardless without, a, a without, a, without a prenup, you do. With a prenup, I wouldn't get it either? Depends on what the prenup says. He could say no community property. Gotcha. Okay. That makes more sense. I mean... <laughs> and then, okay, here's another good story. So uh, then, so then, So then you understand why he needs a prenup. Yeah, I do. Okay, I under you you've made that clear. That's good. Okay, well here's another one. He tells me that if he wants to leave me before the kid is born, he can take full custody of the child. I doubt that's the law. You're in Oregon. I doubt that's the law. Okay. Awesome. But uh, you know, yeah, it's an attorney you should be asking these questions though. Yeah. That's what you told the other lady. And, and by that. the way, isn't that a wonderful relationship? Here's a guy tell, it's already talking about leaving you before the baby is born, and you want to marry him. Isn't it, though? I know I'm I'm a little lost and confused. As Darling, you're you eight, are. Yeah, that's, that's my point. You're 18. You're too young to be having babies. You're too young to be getting married to anybody, not just a loser. Uh, Your judgment is clouded. So I, if he wants the prenup, I should agree to get it. Darling, let's start with this. If he's a loser who's already talking to you about leaving you and taking the baby before, uh, or whatever it was he said, what the, the baby is born before you get married, he can take the baby. Is that what he said? If he's talking into arguments. Yeah. If he's, yeah, and and you're arguing all the time. Oh, all the time. Why do you want to marry somebody like that? Because deep down, I honestly love him, and I darling, I you be love him because you're a child, you're a baby.
Do you understand that? Yeah, I do. Then, but the point is, you don't have to go through with it. Do you understand that? I do. Then why go through with it? Well, we haven't made the marriage final. We're not sure when we're going to get married. But why even be engaged? Because we're young and love is young. Yeah, but you're young and stupid. Oh, I'll admit that. But then... what? It, I'm trying to give you a little wisdom. I have the benefit of having been married and divorced, having been yeah. married at 18, like you're 18 now. I did that. Been there, done that. So did my mother. And how'd that turn out? She's still with him. Really? And they argue and fight and yell and scream. And, and so you think that's what marriage is supposed to be, and therefore you're Oh, probably God, no. Well, then why, no. why, but you, but you see, you did what my therapist would tell me that everybody does, including me. You, you, you went out and found somebody who gives you a life you're comfortable with and familiar with. You went out and found somebody who argues with you all the time. Yes. So you can say you don't want it the way your parents do it, but that's exactly what you went out and did. And At what least. is, what is the rush to procreate, dear? You're only 18. Well, this one I at least try to keep because my first one was a complete mistake. You mean I already you have, already have a kid? I have a two-year-old. Why'd you do that? He was an accident. No, there are no and, there are no accidents. Wait, so, so, so you were on birth control. You were you were taking the pill, and you yep. had a baby anyway. Um, no, there was a different contraceptive, and uh, it didn't follow through. Uh, you could have had an abortion. I don't believe in it. What, you believe in fornicating at 15? Uh, I, I, I can't answer that one. Oh, my God. You are a human train wreck. But thank you so much for calling in and sharing with us. It's the Tom Likas Show.